Life, Life isn't, isn't easy. easy. We, we all have, have moments, moments of struggle, struggle hopelessness, hopelessness, and despair. despair. The day-to-day day day can begin to take its toll. And before we know it, we're consumed. Overwhelmed by stress. Surrounded by fear. Unable to see the light through the darkness. It's no wonder we lose our joy. And forget what peace actually feels like. But there is a way. A way, a way for, for hope, hope to break, break through our walls. walls. A, a way, way for our faith, faith to be renewed. renewed. A, way a way for comfort, comfort to surround us. us. We, we can, can once again feel the light shine brightly on our, on our face. face. We, we can, can experience the warmth of God's love and watch the darkness be overcome. For it's in the light of Jesus we find peace. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go, every moment of every day, from the rise of the dawn to the setting of the sun, from the first cup of coffee to the last bedtime story, at work, in school, among friends, and with your family, during trials and storms. Triumphs and victories on your, on your worst, worst day, day and in your, your finest, finest moment. He is near. For our, our God, God dwells with us and abides in us. In us. His, His presence, presence surrounds us and His, His spirit is inescapable. He loves us with an unimaginable affection and cares for us with an unfathomable passion. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go, God is near. Today, all, all over the world, we are gathering, gathering in, in large, large groups and small, small in different, different places and different, different languages, languages, in buildings and schools, empty spaces and open fields, fields in, our in our homes and on our phones. phones. Some, Some come, come together in freedom, freedom while, while others have to meet in secret. secret. Some will sing the old hymns, while others, others are singing something new. new. We'll all, all learn different things from the same Bible, Bible. and worship, worship the same God, God in different, different ways. ways. 
We are the church, church. the body Body of Christ. Christ. Different Different pieces pieces molded molded together together by the the hand hand of God. God. Today, all over the world, world, we are are gathering gathering as as one. one. Breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger. The King of glory, the King above all things. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory. The King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. 
Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its radiance. The King of glory, the King above all. Oh, yeah, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. Oh, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Oh. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. For worthy is the King who conquered the grave. For worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love, that you would take my place. Thank you, Lord, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. All that you done for me. All that you done for me. All that you done for me. Welcome to Belmont High United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Bomi Kim, and we welcome everybody. Uh, today we have several. Uh, number one, um, number one, everyone's in. We have dinner church, and so everyone's in is uh, still open. So if you want to have small group um, or like have di having dinner with community, please come to Los Alto United Methodist Church for uh, 545 p.m. through 730 p.m. We have like different like Bible, Lent, a uh, Bible study is going on right now. So please join us. And next Sunday, it's Make a Difference Day. So what we are going to do is we gather here on Sunday, uh, March 17th. Gather here Sunday. We are going to have short devotion, pray together, and we go to the parking lot all together, and we are going to sing together, and then pray for the community, and we walk to the Temple Israel. So we are going to be there uh, by 1130. But we are going to be there a little bit early, so helping them to... Uh, registration or we just welcome people there so we get there a little bit early together temple israel is four minutes away from here so it's walk walkable so let's walking together so next sunday we are going to do actually serve this community so not only worshiping at the sanctuary but we are going to go and go to our neighborhood and serve people who are in need so that's our plan for upcoming um sunday and Oh, and this Friday, we have um, Grace on 3rd. Uh, we are, there is a film. We are going to show film at Grace on 3rd, 1946. The mistranslation that shifted culture. Have you heard about that? This is a new film. It's about the homosexuality. And like, so that, that year was kind of big change. So I don't know this film but it'll be really like eye-opening and very interesting film so if you want to see that movie which is a re related to homosexuality issue and how they interpret bible something like that it'll be kind of good so sec 6 30 at grace on third at chapel so grace on third is also four minutes to drive from this church so please go and watch movie together that'll be kind of nice this friday uh, 6 30 at grace on third and then movie title is 1946. 
So it'll be kind of fun. Um, and then, oh, and after this worship service, so season is coming up. What's this? Easter egg hunt. So well, our plan is for this year, under being the church movement, for United Methodist Church in Long Beach together, together, at during Palm Sunday. So we are going to do picnic. And during the picnic time, we are trying to do egg hunt for little kids and maybe probably children and youth. I don't know. So we are going to do egg hunt because it'll, reach, it'll be really great outreaching time. Because so many other kids going to play at playground. So if we have ponds of egg and then egg hunt, they might come to us. And who are you? What is being the church movement? So that's our kind of goal. So today during coffee hour, if you can stay, would you help us to fill out this egg? We have candy. We just need manpower. So we need you to put some candy and then close it. That's it. But we need to prepare 150 eggs. So if you have little bit of time to stay with us and then help us to fill out this egg today. Or you can take some egg and candy and then you fill it out and then bring it back to on March 17th. That would be great too. So I just want to let you know and we need help. Um, yeah, and then we are going to do Monday, Thursday, uh, kind of together, clay and med med meditation. So we are going to actually going to play with clay and reading scripture and do some meditation on Monday, Monday, Thursday. I still need to talk to Pastor Dan, so we, I will let you know what time, 6.30 or 7, I will clear, clear it, and then I will let you know. So May 28th evening. So we are going to play with clay and do meditation. Yeah. Uh, and then Easter Sunday, 6.30 a.m., sunrise worship service at the beach. So we are get, gonna gather at the beach. I will tell you where we exactly gonna meet together. But six thirty, if you're early bird, celebrate Easter in the morning at the beach together. And then after that, we are gonna have like brunch, potluck. So bring some food. And then after that, we are gonna do have Easter traditional worship service together. So that that's all I have. Oh, and I. Irene Hale's memorial service will be May, uh, March 23rd, 2 p.m. at our sanctuary. So if you know Andy, please come. And maybe if we can help as a church community, like, you know, welcome people. And then at the end, like cleaning up, all, all are welcome. Yes. Yeah, so I will, I will send email and more detail for you guys, okay? So please, please join us. Um, I'm inviting Karen for leading us our call to worship. Please join me responsively in the call to worship. God's reach is endless. God's mercy, mercy is unstoppable. God's grace is lavish. God's, God's love, love is constant. God's wisdom is vast. God's hope is stubborn. God's presence is here with, with us, us, among us, us moving, moving through us. us. <clears throat> breathe easy, breathe deeply. We are Our in God's house. Let us worship the one who welcomes us home. With the opening prayer, please Respond with the uh, bold face section. If you ask any parent with a teenager what it's like to wait up for chi their child to meet curfew, they will tell you. They're standing at the door. The porch light is on. No one can sleep until that child is home safe. Friends, I think God is like that for us. The porch light is on. The door is unlocked. We might be late for curfew, but God is just so glad we're home. So let us pray the prayer of confession together, trusting that no matter what we do or what we don't do or leave undone, the porch light is always on. Let us pray. The prodigal son isn't given a name, 
but we know his name. It sounds like ours. And we know his story. It sounds like ours. For who among us hasn't burned a bridge? Who among us hasn't forgotten what we belong to one another? Who among us has not ached for home? The prodigal son isn't given a name, but we know his name. Forgive us, God. We want to come home. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue in our worship. We have two songs this morning. Um, this first one is in the hymnal. It's number 361, Rock of Ages, Clef For Me. Let's sing together. Lord, we're so thankful that you've called us once again to meet together here in this place, in this building that now has become a sanctuary, that now has become a holy place because we are together and you move. Uh, it's, it is our belief that you move in this place, that not only in this place, but you move in our hearts. And when we're together, something amazing can happen. And so, God, expecting, we come expecting you to change us. And not that we're making you do something, but we're allowing you because we're coming, we're, we're expecting, we're hoping to meet with you. So as we worship, as we continue to sing, God, would you make your presence felt in our hearts, in our thoughts as we sing? How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadow of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living Lord.
Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Let's sing that again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours. Is the victory? Oh, 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 let's sing hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the one who set me free! Hallelujah! Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope, Jesus Christ, my living hope, oh God, you are my living hope. Amen. Amen. It's time to stand up and let's greet each other. Lord's be with you and also be with you. Let's be you. Lord's be with you.
can be all seated. <laughs> we are going to have fellowship time, so please be seated. <laughs> Okay, this is, oh, so today we are learning about prodigal son. Are you familiar with this story, right? Yeah. So today I'm going to, instead of me uh, teaching you something, I'm going to show you a children's video. Okay, so it'll be really fun. It doesn't have sound. I mean, it doesn't have, like, you know, they do not speak in English. So it, they are going to say, baby, baby, baby. But so it'll, it, so use your ima imagination what they are saying, but it's, story about prodigal son who left home and who came back that's the story enjoy <laughs>
and situations which need your loving touch. Our hearts ache for those who are ill and for those who mourn. We feel that we cannot do enough for them, but we trust in your comforting love to be with them on this journey. For those who feel lost and alone, seeking God, we ask that you help us to reach out to them with your good news of great and abiding love. For all the situation in our world this day, where your beloved people can suffer, God, please lay your hand of healing love on them. Help them to feel your powerful presence with them, guiding and strengthening them. These things which we have spoken with our lips and our hearts, we offer in confidence of your eternal love. And in the name of Jesus Christ's name, Amen. The scripture this morning is from Luke 15, verses 1 to 3 and 11b to 32. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute, yeah, dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and said, asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your commands, yet you have never given me even a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, he was who has devoured your property with prostitutes. You killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. 
but we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So today is a fourth Sunday of Lent. Time flies. So next Sunday will be um, um, fifth Sunday, and then we're going to do Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, as I said, Palm Sunday, we are going to, after worship, we are going to go recreation park, church picnic, and then we are going to do have egg hunt. So after worship today, I just want to remind you, we are going to fill in this egg out, 150. So we are going to do kind of, you know, some work for children so we can actually celebrate. Jesus, like Easter, together. Okay, so please make some time for us. So we've been talking about food to the brim, and this is your reminder. Even the, in this season, God's grace is full to the brim. God's grace is full of all, and God's grace is enough. More than our concern, more than our anxiety, more than our problems. God's grace is pour, pouring like this and then full to the brim. I just want you to remember that. And we've been talking about four different themes about full to the brim. Let me show you, like, even in the desert, we talk about Jesus in the wilderness. Do you remember that? And the next, and the Sunday after, we talk about God's wing, under God's wing. Even in this difficult time, maybe imagine God as mother, like, under God's wing, like chick, uh, what's that? Uh, not rooster, but hand. God are his mother hand and holding us tight. And there are some pictures. I just want to remind you, if you are having hard time or difficulties, look at this, <laughs> this hand hug, maybe even puppy, okay? Maybe you may think, oh, God may be mad at me. No, look at God was described as a mother hand in the, some scriptures. And that God is also embracing everybody. Just remember that. I just want you to remember this. And next. And then you are worthy. That's what we talked last Sunday. You are worthy. Do not, remember, do not forget that you are worthy. God is calling you. You are worthy. Okay, so this Sunday is prodigal son. So before we move on, um, I have a question for you. I have a quiz. How about the quiz? That's easy and good. So if you win, I will give you a candy. How about that? <laughs> if you know the answer, raise your hand quickly and then the answer. Shout out your answer, right? Okay? Just one question. So what, what is in common in these names? Common thing in these names. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you several names in the Bible. Number one, Abel, Isaac, and Jacob. Hmm? Son. Son. Okay, and you get one, one candy. Okay, sons. But another common, common thing about these names. Abel, Isaac, Jacob. Oh. They're all in the Bible. They're all in the Bible. Okay, you get a candy. Yes, that's right. Right answer. Abel, Isaac, Jacob. They're all Elder son? Second son. Second son. Oh, almost get there. Okay, Lori gets the candy. So they are all second son. Abel, Isaac, Jacob. Adam's son, Cain and Abel, right? Abraham's son, Ismael and Isaac. Isaac's son, Esau and Jacob. So they are all second son. Today we are talking about a prodigal son, which is second son. But in the scripture, like different stories, Always first son, her, uh, always second son was considered pretty good, good one. But this scripture considered them more like prodigal son, what as kind of bad son, right? So that's kind of interesting. So I just want to tell you that the difference. So background of Luke chapter fifteen, that's today's scripture. Luke chapter fifteen, it starts like this. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus responds by telling these three parables. 
Okay? So Jesus is saying three parables. Do you know what other parables? Lost sheep. Lost coin. And then third parable is prodigal son. Okay, are you familiar with this scripture? So lost sheep. So I will just tell you a little bit. Hundred sheep the owner, shepherd has, and then he realized one is missing. So he left 99 and then tried to find one which is missing. And then he found it and he gathered his friends and celebrated. Oh, I finally found my lost sheep. And then the last verse is like repent, uh, repent, and then you know. And the second um, second parable is about lost coin. Woman has ten coins, and then she lost one. And then she was looking for the lost coin, so using lights and then trying to find it. And finally, she found it and she celebrated again. And then this is prodigal son. But here is kind of question: Whose fault? If shepherd lost, uh, has lost sheep, is sheep's problem? That that's <laughs> kind of my first kind of question. Like why? Like it, we consider this scripture as a repent and come back to God, but let's just read it like literally: lost sheep and lost coin and prodigal son. Let's see, lost uh, lost sheep. Maybe shepherd's problem because he lost it. And then, and then the sheep just came, and then he celebrated. How about lost coin? The coin has been lost. Did she or did he did something wrong? That coin was just lost, and then found. So is it really a repentance story? Like, is it kind of interesting? I, I just start thinking about that. Okay, but today is a prodigal son. Who actually actively left home to get something more, to explore more, right? And then what did he do? He spent all the money. And there was another son, right? The first son. Who didn't leave and who worked really hard? Who did whatever, like who did all the good things? Checklist, check all the box. So he's good first son. And he stayed at home. But the younger one too. Half of money and even in back there, back then, asking dad who didn't die as money. Like you are gonna give me money when you die, meaning it's kind of brutal. Dad didn't die, he's still active and okay, but the younger son asked, Hey dad, can you give me money that the money that you will give me when you die? Huh. So this young son was kind of interesting young man, right? And so he took that money and spent everywhere, and then he, what, what happened to him? He became poor, right? He ran out of the money, and what did he do? He tried to find a job. So he tried to feed pig, and then he was so hungry, so she, he was thinking to eat, right? The what pigs are eating, right? And then at that moment, he has an aha. Oh, what a, wait a minute, I have tons of good food and everything at my dad's home. Maybe it's time to go back. So he went back home, right? And then he was kind of worried, so he practiced by maybe mind control. What if God, dad said, like, I'm bad, and maybe dad is still mad at me? So he practiced, hey, dad, do not consider me as your son, but consider me as your servant. So I'm here, just use me, just feed me. And then what happened to him? Daddy was waiting for him, and then what happened? Yeah, he just grabbed his neck and hugged him, and then what did he do? Giving him new robe, and then sandal, even ring, and then got like really fatty cow for him. And the older son got really mad because of that. I've been working hard in this home, and you never got a little goat for me. And now you are celebrating this guy, this young man spent all the money and just came back. He didn't do anything, and why do you celebrate him? So he's kind of mad. So here's a question. Who are you in this scripture? Who are you in this scripture? Are you considering yourself as a prodigal son? 
Or you consider yourself as an older son? Yeah, oh, that's, that's a good point. Depends on what part of the story. Are you consider as your, you as a father? There is no right or wrong answer. What do you think? Maybe it depends on the situation. So, another question. Where is your home? Where is your home? This is one of them. Where is your home? Maybe let me change the question. Where is your hometown? Long Beach. Where is your hometown? Wherever you grow up. Where is your hometown? Oh, where your parents are. Where your heart is. Where your heart is. Wherever, wherever you, you are at the time. You got all the answer. And maybe with this kind of concept, home, prodigal son came back home, right? He was looking for the home, which had tons of food and everything. Maybe he was looking for physical home, right? Then how about older son? What kind of home is missing for him? What kind of home is he looking for? Because scripture didn't say that dad didn't invite him to the party. So dad, in the scripture, dad didn't say, hey, you need to come. We are going to have a party for a younger son who just came back. So you need to come. No, he didn't know. He was still working. And there is something going on at my home. So he turned back and he asked the uh, servant, hey, what's going on at my home? Oh, your dad is having tons of a good party for your younger brother. So he got mad. So let, I was thinking, I was meditating on this scripture. Maybe this older son was missing some sense of belonging. Maybe daddy didn't include him for the party. So he got mad. But he was pretty righteous. He did all the work that he needed to do. He never left home, so he stayed at home. So he was physically at home. But maybe he was missing, maybe emotionally he was missing home. He was maybe disconnected from his dad. Or maybe daddy didn't invite him, so he got mad. How about that? Then how about father? He was physically at home. Right? So he never left home, but he was also missing something. What was it? His younger son. So maybe he was still at home, which is like we, are, we love to say home. He was at home, but maybe he was emotionally not completed because he has an older son, but he was missing his younger son. Do you know what, do you understand what I'm trying to deliver to you? Home. We are longing for home. Maybe we need physical needs, like home, like younger son needed. But some of us, we have physical home, we have plenty of food, but we are maybe looking for home like emotional home, where I feel belong. Maybe you have home and you have good community, but maybe you are missing home, which is maybe I don't feel connected to God, or maybe my dad or my mom, or something like that, spiritually. So that so as we can just read the scripture again. I just want to tell you, each one, younger son, older son, even father, they're missing something. They are looking for a home. And they are looking for a home, but in a different home. We say it's a home, but in a different home. And where are you now? What kind of home are you looking for? What is missing in your life? Maybe the scripture can be read like this. Because I, I just, before the worship, Karen, I, I, Karen, and talk about this, and Karen said, oh, I'm not that into this, this scripture. <laughs> Is it okay if I, if I share? She said, I'm always older son. Because she never, I think, left church. So she feel like, oh, this scripture is maybe blaming me. Because <laughs> just being at, at church and, right? But I also read uh, one theologian's article about this. She is Jewish. And she's interpreting this new, new, new testament, especially this scripture. And she's trying to say, 
I don't like this scripture because it's kind of more anti-Jewish. Because like older son is sometimes considered as uh, Jewish. Pharisees who stays and grumbling about like new people to come. So they she could interpret the scripture like that. Isn't it kind of interesting? But my point today, we are all looking for a home like prodigal son. And the, here's the point. We can consider father as God figure. That's one way to interpret this scripture. But what if we just see each person as a human being, younger son who left home and the older son who stayed home but lost his joy, and the father who was missing his younger son and looking for that son. And who didn't maybe count that older son? So maybe who hurt the older son? Then here's the point. We all need grace. Go to the brim again. If you're a prodigal son, you left God for a while and you just came back, yes, it's time to come back home and reunite with God. So that's the grace that God is providing you in this moment. If you are an older son who been staying at home all the time, who been attending church all the time, so I feel like I'm older son. I didn't do anything wrong. I've been kind of righteous. What should I do? So maybe you may want to find some joy out of your ordinary life or out of ordinary um, religious practice. You may be missing some joy. So maybe it's time for you to find that grace. God is providing you the joy, that grace, because you already have everything. Prodigal son left home, so he didn't have a chance to be connected with God. But if you are in this house as an older son, you already have your dad with you. You already have, but you forgot. So maybe remember that God's grace, may God's grace give you that real realization. Oh, I already have what I need. Because I'm older son, I've been righteous, but also God, please guide me to think about that grace that maybe I'm missing. And then as a father, maybe you are missing something in your life at this moment. Maybe looking for something really eagerly. And then maybe you, your son, last son came back and you embrace him with wide open. And may God give you kind of understanding, oh, I am so happy to embrace this younger son, but may God give me grace not to forget the son that I already have, the older son who's been there for me all the time. So do we count everybody in this home, right? If we say Belmont Heights as a home, are we welcoming prodigal son in this place? Are we actually rejoicing people who are coming to this place? Are we maybe missing counting the older son? So many questions and you can think about this scripture. That's why the beauty of the scripture, why we need to read scripture. It has so many stories to talk. And God is still inviting us to think. Who are you in this scripture? Are you older son? Are you younger son? Are you father? Or maybe you are the cat. <laughs> Just think about it, right? So many abundant stories in this like short scripture. Oh, and home. Again, home. So I was thinking about home. What's home for me? Should I consider my hometown table as home? Uh, I went back like last year and I remember my high school still there. I felt kind of home. But oh, many of my friends left my hometown already. So I don't have lots of friends in my hometown. Because most of them went to Seoul to study. So like, oh, I don't have many. But I still have my mom and dad live there. So it's still home, but it's not 100% home. Okay, then I came to United States. Should I consider United States as my home? I started my uh, study at Claremont. So that's my first home in the United States. Should I consider Claremont as my home? But so many friends who study with me, they left. They already left. So I don't have a friend down there. So I was looking for a home, but oh, maybe Claremont cannot be. OK, 
okay then, maybe Georgia, I spent time more than California five and a half years. So maybe Georgia can be my home. I still remember, you know, the taste of southern food, so I still love Georgia. Oh, but it doesn't feel like home. Uh, something is not feel like home. Oh, okay, now I'm in Long Beach, and then Chino Hill, where is my home? So now I consider this place as my home. But recently I realized where my home is. My mom is visiting and I lay down with her after putting my kids to sleep. And I just, all of a sudden I just lay down with my home, my, with my mom. And then I just sense it. It's been a while. Even she came home, I didn't lay down with my mom. And I just feel her kind of feeling, right? Energy and her breath and then her, how can I say, warmness. I realize, oh, this is home. That's what I've been missing. You know? Oh, that's the home that I've been missing. So I'm so glad I have physical home and I'm like, I'm, I, I found my home. My mom is here with me, so which is like, gives me joy at the moment. So what, what kind of home experience do you have? Isn't it kind of interesting, right? Home, we are missing home. But again, let's go back to scripture. God can be your home. If you don't have really comfy, safe home in this world, remember, God is your home. God loves you so much. God cares about you. And God is not dying. God is with you all the time. That's really good promise, right? That God is take care of you. God is saying that I love you so much, that's why I gave one and only son. That's the theme of whole land. I want you to remember that part. Maybe your home is God and it's time to come back. And maybe when we receive, when we experience real home, we can be home for somebody else. Do you agree? If I really know what home feels like, we can be home to somebody who needs home. And that God is inviting you to feel home in God and to be home to somebody else. Maybe that's our hope today. Oh, I'm going to tell you one more, one more uh, word. When father holds his younger son in, in grief, splat, Splatchy needs so much. The wording meaning gut wrenching. Emotional response that is so strong that we, we are physically moved to act. So God was so happy to see his younger son like emotionally, gut wrenching feeling. And hug him all of a sudden without thinking. It's illogical love, right? Ray, radical love, radical grace. Honestly, a younger son, he didn't do anything, right? He just thought about that, he just came back. He didn't do anything good. But when God, when Father saw him, he hugged him. That word is flag chini jo mai, meaning God wrenching him. I'm so happy, I'm grabbing you. And then it, that emotion turned into the action. God is hugging you like this. How about that? That feels so good, right? Eternal God, powerful, loving, caring God is hugging you whenever you come back. Maybe it's us. Oh, I'm not qualified to get that hug. God, Dad, just a little bit distance, private distance, please, because I'm not qualified. I'm not that good. But God is trying to hug you like this. I'm going to read a poem for you. Maybe you may close your eyes as we read our message today. The title is What Doesn't Play by the Rules. You may close your eyes. I come into the room calculating what I've got as if hurt could be measured, as if there was a score system as if we could say what I owe in return. I come into the room ready to apologize, ready to mark a man 
ready to tell you all the things I will do to make it better. But you put your arms around me. Grace is the ocean that softens the edge. Grace is rain in the desert. You are not sure whether to laugh, cry, or dance. Grace is a miracle all by itself. In a scorekeeping world, grace doesn't play by rules. I come into the room calculating what I've been done. You say there's grace here. It feels like a miracle. I don't know whether to laugh, cry, or dance. Amen. It's time for response. Just think about this. Who are you in this scripture and what kind of grace are we looking for? What do what grace do we need in this moment? Maybe it's time to pray to God. God, I need this grace. Maybe grace that you gave to your older son, maybe grace that you gave to younger son, or maybe father. And you can uh, it's time to give. So if you have offering, you can place on this plate or you can use QR code. And because of your gift offering, we are able to keep doing our ministry in this world. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the way of the sin Jesus is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior is any wonder. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Sing that again. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior is any wonderful. Yes, he 
get the hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, bow down before Him, for He is the Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Come to the altar, let's sing. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. your presence, into your house, for all that you have done for us, most especially for bringing us into the life of Jesus Christ. We offer our thanks and praise. We long to live as children of light, doing what is pleasing to you and bearing the fruit of light through Jesus Christ, who awakens those who sleep and raises those who are dead to new life. In his name we pray, Amen. If you're able, please stand and receive this benediction. And after this, we have coffee hour and time to fill in the egg. <laughs> Our lives can be be full, messy, complicated, imperfect, a wreck. But remember, God's grace will still be there for you. Go forth and experience God's grace in the people in your life, without limits. In the name of God and Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen.